Always Mine by Samadhi W. Chapter 6 Hermione stared at the ceiling in deep thought. She knew if Malfoy hadn't stopped, she would have eagerly handed him her virginity on a platter. Hermione had to admit it. It was different from their earlier years. Oh, way to go, Hermione. Apparently, being an egotistical prat turns you on now. She groaned helplessly before returning to her room. She was desperate to give him the benefit of the doubt. Draco seemed to care for her genuinely. He had been so gentle and intent only on her pleasure. Oh, fucking crap. Was she developing feelings for the Southern Prince? In frustration, Hermione flopped down on her bed and covered her head with a fluffy pillow. No, no, she did not have a crush on that idiot. What the actual fuck? Draco thought, running as fast as his legs would take him to the dungeons. Oh, hell no. He was not falling for that uptight Gryffindor princess. What the bloody hell was happening to him? His inner voice bellowed inside his head. Draco stormed inside the southern common room and looked around wildly. His eyes settled on Astoria. She raised her eyebrow questioningly at him. Closing the distance between them, hurriedly, he pulled her to him and crushed her lips with his. The surprised girl melted into his urgent kiss and need. Get a room, you disgusting git. It's way too early to see that shit. He complained from across the room. Draco broke away from the embrace, and Astoria looked at him, utterly confused, but extremely pleased. He wanted to erase what happened with Granger, and so far he was doing a piss-poor job of it. A taste was still on his tongue. Draco all but dragged Astoria towards the door. Maybe a shack would take his mind off the Griffin of Virgin. Theo rolled his eyes again. It must be fucking awesome to be you, Draco called after his friend retreating figure. Blaze groggily walked into the common room, rubbed his eyes sleepily, and asked, What's going on? Theo closed his eyes and silenced him. Wait, I'm wallowing in self-pity and loathing. Blaze sat down and inquired, Was that Draco? Theo groaned again. Please don't ask, Sabini, I beg of you. Blaze frowned at his friend and wondered what the hell happened. Hermione sluggishly dragged her feet to the Gryffindor common room. Stewing in her frustration had not worked out. Her mind kept dangerously wandering back to a Slytherin self-proclaimed prince, his fingers and not to mention his bloody, talented tongue. He wished he had not left her as he did, but she did understand the pressure he must be feeling. They were opposites. He was deemed unworthy and dirty in his world. Despite the end of the war, certain ideologies would never disappear. Ron and Harry were asleep, but Ginny was wide awake and apparently waiting for her. Finally, Ginny declared the minute Hermione came into view. She gave her best friend a funny yet cautious look and settled on a beanbag beside the fireplace. Ginny looked at her weirdly and Hermione scolded. Okay, cut it out. You're creeping me out. What is it? Oh, how is dear Mr. Malfoy? Ginny asked innocently. Hermione blushed. What do you mean? With a twinkle in her eyes, Jenny retorted, If I didn't know any better, and of course I do, I would sell Malfoy fancy ye. Hermione let out a nervous laugh. <laughs> You're fucking mad. There is no fucking way. Jenny smirked, explained the previous night's events, and concluded, You didn't see the way he carried you yesterday after you passed out. She snorted. That poor bugger was trying hard to show his pretty side to Harry and me, but it was almost protective, the way he held ye. Manny desperately wanted to tell Ginny what had happened. She gathered her courage. I... I have something to tell you. Ron chose this moment to come down the stairs. Yon smiled warmly and dropped a kiss on her sweaty forehead. Guilt tore through her. It was overwhelming, but she kept her mouth shut. There were other questions to ask her dear boyfriend. She turned on him and questioned suspiciously. Where the hell were you yesterday? He looked lost and gave her a thoughtful look. 
Oh, I have no freaking clue. I was about to evade your dorm to see if you returned safely. Ginny snorted, and they both turned to look at the red-headed girl sitting in front of them. She grinned. Oh, she made it back safely, all right. Hermione's eyes widened. She tried in vain to get Ginny's attention. Oh, Merlin! She hoped Ginny would just shut up. But it was too late. Ginny leaned in and informed smugly, Hermione was pissed and passed out. Now if I carried her back to her dorm... In anger, Ron's ears turned bright red. That slimy get it what? Jenny rolled her eyes. Yeah, well, you want that. He stepped in, fucking deal with it, Ron. Hermione always admired Jenny's I don't give a shit attitude. She dished it out to whoever deserved it, no matter who they were. Ron turned his attention to Hermione. Oh, I'm so sorry, darling. I swear it'll never happen again. She hardly drank, so how did she become that intoxicated? And then, it dawned at her. She hurriedly turned to Ron and hissed, How did I get so drunk? He looked at her sheepishly. I, ah, uh, might have added bar whiskey to your butter beer. Hermione stood up furiously. Ron and Billy is Weasley, you disgusting human being, how dare you? Ron stood up with her and hissed, Lawyer voice, woman. He looked around and threatened through clenched teeth. Everyone's looking at us. She took out her wand and pointed at Ron's face. He backed away, afraid of what was going to happen. Oh, I just want to help you loosen up. You're so uptight sometimes. Ron confessed angrily. He lamely tried to justify his actions. She could not believe him. Once the race, she shook in anger. Jenny rushed back at the sound of raised voices and asked quickly, oh, What happened? Amali sneered, furious beyond words. Run at my drink spiked last night. She let her voice turn ice cold before adding darkly, Because he wanted to loosen me up. Ginny glared at her brother in disbelief before hitting him with her bare hands. Hermione turned on her heel and walked away. She heard Ron pleading, Oi, get off me, you not! Draco rolled away from the Ravenheart girl in disappointment. He was pretty and he knew Astoria was his intended fiancé, but she did fuck all for him. It was like sticking his cock into a bottomless hole. Bollocks! Not only was he still thinking about Granger, but now he was also sexually frustrated. Fucking great. Without a word, he hurriedly dressed and left a stunned Astoria behind. Hermione watched Draco enter. Her heart slammed against the ribcage and started to beat faster. Her eyes followed him. He seemed impatient and flustered. Draco glanced over at the Gryffindor princess. She fucking had him by the balls. Hoping he had not seen her, she quickly hid behind the book she was reading. She had come straight from the Gryffindor common room to the dorm, kicked over a pile of books and screamed into a pillow. Anger, hate and loathing did not justify how mad she was at her boyfriend. She knew that most of her peers were sexually active, especially from sharing the dorm with the widely proclaimed sex god of Hogwarts. Draco had a reputation for being amazing and bad. He was simply considered a really good fuck. She always wondered why he was so good, considering he was still quite young. The best, actually, but he was specific with his girls he took to bed. The mind did not doubt his reputation any more, especially not after using his hands and mouth to work on her. He had returned to the dorm many an evening for mourning to his conquests. Grunts and moans came out of his room, and she covered her ears and fled the dorm. But she hated those times. Having to hear his pleasured groans and a girl's high-pitched moans made her bloody skin crawl. Draco walked up to Hermione and took the book she was hiding behind. Hey! She protested feebly. It was at a book better to understand the title. Pride and Prejudice? He read aloud. Why are you reading this muggle shit, Granger? She gave him a look. 
It's a muggle classic, and I happen to enjoy reading muggle novels, Draco. She smiled smugly. As you constantly remind me, I am a muggle-born. He fixed her with a disgusted look. Was this the woman he had fantasized about all day, even while sleeping with Astoria? Bloody fantastic. Amani stood up and Draco swallowed. The shorts she wore barely covered her ass. What was she thinking wearing something skimpy like that? He hoped she had stayed in the dorm wearing it. A weird feeling crept up on him. A pang of jealousy hit him at the thought of other men oogling her. She has a boyfriend, genius. You'll have to worry about more than just oogling, mate. Seriously, fuck this. Draco was so distracted by his thoughts, he didn't see her grab the book. So I hand last minute and skillfully sidestepped to avoid her. Her mind lost her balance, toppled forward, and she grabbed onto his shirt to stop herself from falling. But they both crashed down to the carpet. He laid on top of her. The book lay discarded a few feet away from them. He could see she was breathing hard. Her nipples were erect through her T-shirt. Looked at him expectantly and bit a swollen, glossy lip. Zalazar. He urgently bent down to kiss her. Barely had he brushed his lips with hers when a loud knock interrupted them. They broke apart simultaneously and Draco cursed under his breath. Fuck! Hermione scrabbled from under him and walked hurriedly towards the urgent knocking. He watched her hips move from side to side. Granger was a timeless beauty. Muggleborn or not, he could appreciate a beautiful woman. She had really blossomed from her early days of wild hair and buck teeth. Hoisting himself up reluctantly, he went to get a drink of water. Leaning casually against the counter, he heard her speak with the visitor. Oh, I'm sorry, Hermione. Please just talk to me. At least look at me. Draco's interest was piqued. He listened intently. Can I come in, please? Once desperate voice travelled. Draco made a face. He hoped she wouldn't let the cheating bastard inside. Come in, Ron. We can talk in my room. The miner said diplomatically and stepped away from the door. Draco rolled his eyes in disgust when he heard Ron's sigh of relief. The redhead kid stepped into their common room with a smile plastered to his plain-looking face. Draco crawled. Trouble in paradise, weasel shit. Ron hadn't even acknowledged a Slytherin's man's presence. His eyes and mind were fixated on Hermione's bouncing off. Draco felt his temper rising, and his hands bored into fists. He couldn't stomach the way Weasley looked at Hermione. The weasel was the walking definition of pathetic and desperation. Ron looked over at Draco and narrowed his eyes. He stepped forward and hissed, Oh, I haven't meant to talk to you, Death Eater. Draco lazily looked over at Ron. He seriously could not fathom what Granger saw in him. The Gryffindor hissed through clenched teeth. Don't you fucking dare touch him one again. Draco dinked the rest of his water slowly, placed the glass in the sink and turned to face the fuming red-headed man. He grinned smugly. That's up to her money, mate. If she wants, I'm definitely going to touch her. A knowing smile spread across his face and he thought. I made your girlfriend orgasm, bitch. I bet you my family fortune that she's never experienced anything like that with you. Ron took a threatening step towards Draco with his fist raised. The tall blonde eyed him with mild interest and asked calmly, Fuck Brown yet? Ron stopped dead in his tracks. He visibly paled. What the fuck are you on about? Draco sneered triumphantly. I saw you kissing Brown last night. The red-headed Gryffindor looked alarmed. His eyes started in panic towards Hermione's room. Draco thoroughly enjoyed Ron's discomfort. Don't worry, your precious little girlfriend has no idea. Closing the distance, Ron hissed angrily. If you ever so much as, I swear to Merlin. Draco's eyes darkened. You'll do what, you fucking pathetic excuse of a wizard? 
He took out his wand and pointed it at Ron. The tip dug deep into the nervous Gryffindor's chest. Draco leaned forward and spat. The ranger deserves better than you. The words that left his mouth surprised him, and apparently Weasel's shirt felt the same because he stepped back and stared disbelievingly. Draco rushed past, leaving a thoroughly confused Ron to stare after him. He glanced at Hermione's room, went inside his own, and banged the door shut. The hours ticked by. His clock taunted and tormented him. Why the fuck hadn't Weasel left yet? Out of guilt? Or some shit? He hoped Granger did not hand over her virginity to the fucking moron sweet-talking her in her room. It was half past eight, and he knew the imbecile was still in her room. Their voices were low enough now after she screamed bloody mad at him. Jake laughed hard, picturing Weasley hiding under Hermione's bed away from her hexes. He glanced at the clock again. Sodders. They had had duties and rounds to do. Not that he minded invading their privacy. He fucking welcomed it. Hoping that Teresa Moran would leave soon, he walked towards the head girl's room. Draco stood outside the corridor and cleared his throat. Ahem, <clears throat> Ranger, we need to patrol the corridors. The door opened at one. Ron, casually lounging on her bed, a stupid grin plastered on his face. Draco threw Hermione a deadly cold look, causing her to flinch at the intensity in his eyes. Was that a hint of hurt and jealousy swimming around in her stormy grey swells? He stared at her face, pointed to Ron disgustingly, and snarled, Are you coming, or are you going to stay holed up with that all night? Give me five minutes, Draco, Hermione requested politely. He raised his eyebrow at using his given name in front of the Weasley Morin. Weasley hadn't heard her. She turned to face her boyfriend. I've got to do my rounds, Ron. Let's meet up tomorrow. Ron pushed himself off the bed, beamed at her, pulled her towards him, and kissed her hard and awkwardly. Draco grimaced in disgust. The man had no idea how to pleasure a woman. Hermione scrummed uncomfortably, removed herself from her boyfriend's grasp, and glanced nervously at the ice blonde man. His eyes. Dangerous, smouldering, and angry. Those beautiful mouthful eyes were ice-cold, voids of emotion. He had been staring at them throughout. Ron flipped the bird before departing, but he was looking elsewhere, even to notice. Unable to hide his contempt, Draco sped, Shall we get this over with, Granger? I have already informed the prefects about taking the lower levels, and we can do the top ones. She swallowed the lump stuck in her throat and nodded her approval, because Merlin, she did not trust her voice. They walked in silence, each playing with their wands. Sparks flew out of the tips, but greater uncontrollable sparks were flying between them. His fingers brushed up against hers accidentally, and she let out a gasp. Draco stopped dead in his tracks and stared her down. Rena's fingers threw his hair and said callously, Look, Granger, about what happened earlier. Just fucking forget about it, all right? It will never happen again. Staring at the wall behind her head, he added unconvincingly, It was a huge mistake. The words he spoke hurt. They hurt really bad. She masked the pain in her heart and looked away. What else did she expect from Draco fucking Malfoy? This was a good thing. He could forget the prat and move on. When she didn't respond, he turned towards her in concern. No one was angry or hurt, or worse, both. Ranger, can you say something? He pleaded softly. Hermione looked at him, her eyes a fiery shade of orange. She hissed, what do you want me to say, Malfoy? She added at once. It was a mistake. I mean, obviously, I'm a fucking mudblood, right? I'm not worthy of you. He let out a frustrated groan. Ranger, shut up. Don't make this sodding uncomfortable. And, uh, don't call yourself that. Hands on hips, she fumed. Why? You call me that all the bloody time. It was a statement more than a question. He opened his mouth to retaliate, but no words came out. Whatever, Malfoy. 
I can finish this corridor alone. You take the next. Dismissed him and walked away. Before Draco could respond, a stubborn witch had taken off and disappeared around the corner. Did she just fucking walk away from him? He silently cursed. His head was in absolute turmoil. His feelings were spiraling out of control and he could not understand what was happening. After completing the rounds, he lingered by her door, wanting to say anything. But he didn't. He couldn't. He knew he hurt her deeply. That much was apparent, but what did she want from him? It was a fool's dream. He was a Malfoy, for fuck's sake. His father would kill both of them and enjoy every second of it. Hermione listened intently as the shower came to life. She had a slew of curses as Draco bent to pick up the bath soap he dropped. The shadow under her door had given her hope that he would find the courage to talk to her, but he hadn't. Snuggling into her many pillows, she willed herself to sleep and forget about Draco Malfoy. The moment her eyes closed, he was kissing, touching, and exploring her like a forbidden fruit with his tongue. Being with him felt like time stopped, and nothing but their wanting existed. Every emotion, every desire, every bloody touch was heightened, and she got lost in his presence. Why did she not feel that way with Ron? Not even remotely close. She loved Ron, right? No, logically, shouldn't it be, if not better, with him than the Slytherin sex god? He was probably considered good because everyone else was inexperienced. She was so confused. Then he told her it was a mistake, but had she expected anything more from him? She hadn't expected anything from him, then why in the name of Merlin had it hurt so much when he called her a mistake and more disturbingly, why did she want him to kiss her again and again? Disturbing thoughts. Amani warned herself repeatedly. She hoped the new day would bring some answers. To be continued. Thank you for listening to this chapter of Always Mine by Samadhi W. If you'd like to stay up to date on upcoming chapters and stories, you can follow me on YouTube, Spotify or AO3.